On six members of Cincinnati City Council reach a deal to override Mayor Cranley's vetoes to the city budget. And Jeanette Levy is live at City Hall with how the deal came together. And Jeanette. Well, Cammie, over the last week, council members Jeff Pastor, a Republican, and Chris Seelbach, he's a Democrat, they say they worked together to reach this compromise. Those two, along with council members Wendell Young, Tamaya Denard, Greg Landsman, and P.G. Sittenfeld, voted today to override Mayor Cranley's vetoes. So there will still be a police recruit class, shot spotter technology will be deployed in Price Hill, and $960,000 in funding will be restored for the Liberty Street project. The goal of that project is to reduce traffic and make it safer for pedestrians in the neighborhood. Funding will also be restored to the Center for Closing the Health Gap, which was cut by Mayor Cranley over concerns that the center wasn't using the money properly. No, not everyone got what they want, but we, we compromised, and that's what led to the, the votes today to overturn the mayor's vetoes. It was, it was extraordinarily difficult. Um, it was difficult because you got so many competing factions, uh, you know, trying to pull you one way or the other, and because me and my colleague, Mr. Silbach, were the six votes respectively for the Omnibus and the Liberty Street Project, um, it was a lot of, you know, you know, pulling from here, robbing people to the PayPal. Now, there was a political aspect to all of this. The interesting thing about the Center for Closing the Health Gap is that it's run by former Cincinnati Mayor Dwight Tillery. You may recall that Tillery was a big supporter of Mayor Cranley's in his first campaign for mayor. But then when he sought reelection, he endorsed Cranley's opponent, Yvette Simpson. So he did that, or we're told that he, the mayor had a lot of concerns about how the center was spending its money. Chris Seelbach said today that those concerns are very overblown and that the center's books are open to the city anytime they want to inspect them. So it sounds like there may have been a political aspect to all of this, but Mayor Cranley had called a lot of the spending that he vetoed reckless. Reporting live at City Hall, Anjanette Levy, Local 12 News. Cami, back to you. All right, Anjanette, thank you. Now, today's vote was to override Mayor Cranley's vetoes. Another vote will be held on another spending ordinance next week since some of the funding amounts have changed.